Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I am currently in a casino here in Texas. Now you may think to yourself, okay, so what? What's the big deal? First of all, casinos are illegal in Texas. And more importantly, I have a severe gambling problem. You see, Texas has many laws. For example, you are not allowed to eat your neighbor's garbage. Hey, what are you doing? Or, you can't shoot buffaloes from the second story of a hotel. <laughs> yeah, boy. FBI, open up! No, really. These are actual laws in Texas. However, among the numerous random laws in Texas, there is one that stands out as particularly strict, the gaming law. No poker, no dice games, no sports betting, no slots, and especially no casinos. The only somewhat legal forms of gambling include parimutuel wagering on horse racing, charitable bingo, and the Texas lottery. But didn't you say you were in a casino in Texas? Yes, I did. So why is there a casino in a state where casinos are illegal? The answer is a bit complicated and has to do with US history. Here, take a seat at the poker table and let me explain. Bruh. Oh, come on, don't worry, I will only play one round. <laughs> no, 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 no. You know what? You should never go shopping if your butthole is itching. Welcome to the Wild West of Texas, a land filled with cowboys, outlaws, and these things randomly rolling through the streets. If you've ever seen a classic Western movie or played a cowboy-themed video game, you'll probably recognize this place, the Frontier Town, small settlements in the middle of nowhere. They were often found near railroads and cattle drive routes and served as recreational spots for hardworking men, striving for a better life for themselves and their families. Now, what do these devoted fathers need after a long day of labor? Exactly. Whiskey, oak, gambling, and prostitutes, all of which can be found in the saloon, the predecessor of the modern casino. It was a gambler's paradise. All types of men came here to get drunk, duck women, and make a fortune playing cards and dice games. Everybody gambled, and it gets even better. Being a professional gambler was an actual job. If I was telling my family I wanted to play roulette for a living, they would hold an intervention and call me an addict. But back then, being a professional gambler was just as legit as being a doctor. The saloons played a significant role in the local economy, and the number of professional gamblers in a town was often seen as an indicator of its prosperity. What a time to be alive. Near the end of the 20th century, public opinion towards gambling began to change. Social reform movements, often led by religious groups and a bunch of Karens, Um, excuse me, can I talk to your manager? pushed for tougher gaming regulations and prohibitions. But let's be honest, some wife probably just discovered what her husband was doing in the saloon. You are such an asshole, Gerald. Eventually, due to public pressure, the Texas government decided to completely ban all forms of gambling. This decision marked the end of an era, or so it seemed. What the religious movement pushing for this ban failed to realize was that the story of Adam and Eve taught us one thing. Forbidden fruits always taste the sweetest. Did they really think a stupid law would stop people from risking their life savings on a game of chance? Yeah, I'm down 26,000. Yeah, well, maybe we should... Wait, $26,000? Some people are literally sweating right now, just thinking about gambling. That's called an addiction. Shut up, Karen. That's called dedication. Scrape it, scrape it, scrape that motherfucker! What I'm trying to say is passing a gambling law doesn't mean that people magically lose interest in playing poker or shit like, I don't know, betting your son's college fund on a fifth division women's cricket match in fucking Bangladesh. Even after the ban in 1903, people continued to gamble. However, they had to go to underground gambling establishments. What's the secret password? Skibbity toilet, Ohio Riss, W. Kai Sinet. Okay, come in. During the progressive era, these illegal gambling operations were often run by organized crime and by one single man in particular, Benny the Cowboy Binion. Now this is what a Texan gangster should look like with his slick cowboy hat and a fucking fur coat. I mean, look at this dude. This guy is a baller. If someone told me he got that coat by throwing his hat like a ninja shuriken and decapitating a fucking bison, I wouldn't even question it. 
Don't be fooled by this cheeky smile. Binion was a ruthless gangster who rose to power as the kingpin of illegal gambling by eliminating his competitors and bribing the police. Everybody knew about his underground casinos, but during the 1930s he seemed to be untouchable. Eventually, the Texan government couldn't turn a blind eye any longer and started taking action against his illegal empire, causing Binion to flee to Las Vegas by 1946. The cowboy was gone, and it seemed like Texas has finally won the war on gambling. To this day, no one has been able to open a casino within the borders of the Lone Star State. With one exception. Nope. Although casinos remain banned in Texas as of the creation of this video, there are currently three operating casinos in the state. How is this possible? Well, they aren't technically in Texas. Um, actually, that's not correct. The Kickapoo Lucky Eagle, the Speaking Rock, and the Nasquila Casino, which we are currently at, are all located on Native American reservations. Now, please note that I am not a lawyer, so take this explanation with a grain of salt. Okay. But the U.S. Supreme Court recognizes these reservations as sovereign nations, meaning that they have their own government, their own tribal courts, and they can make their own laws. State laws basically don't apply to these territories. So as long as these casinos operate under the so-called Indian Gaming Regulatory Act, Texas can't do shit about them. So yeah, that's the reason why Sir, your credit card got declined, and you owe the casino $69,420. I told you I had a fucking problem. Now please subscribe and watch my other videos, so I can maybe pay off my gambling debt.